To become a true diplomacy player, you need to survive trial by knife. You know, when your friend and closest ally inserts a knife between your third and fourth vertebrae. This game was not only the best stabbing I've received, but also it taught me two really important diplomacy lessons that I have used in every single game since. This is Legendary Tactics. You don't have to wait a long time to get the reasons. In fact, I'll tell you the first lesson right up front. Always expect the stab, but don't let it stop you from making allies. There's a really fine line between being paranoid and being guarded. Too much paranoia will mean that you can't effectively ally with anybody, and you'll find your diplomacy experience rife with dysfunctional relationships, stressful mornings waking up to see how your best laid plans have all gone to waste with a traitorous ally, and endless checkups on your moves to make sure you actually hit the submit orders button correctly. But overall, this experience of diplomacy is not going to leave you very satisfied. I played this particular game a long time ago, and back then I knew that many people had lost friends over this game. It was often considered one of the world's most deceitful games, and it was not a game you played with people who had a thin skin. What I didn't know was that hubris has a way of revisiting those who think they are untouchable and that the game um, is played on very many different levels here. Throughout this game, I want to show you how I went from owning most of the game to suffering ignominious defeat. My first mistake was thinking that because I had helped a player come back from the brink, that he would be beholden to me and would help me win. If you haven't already guessed in this game, I'm playing Russia. This game has a number of less experienced players on the map, and you'll sometimes see maneuvers that evidence that fact. But nonetheless, even rookies are mighty when they join forces. So for Turkey, this was actually his first time trying the game. You can see it's not going too well for him. Um, I basically invaded and attacked him straight off the hop. Uh, and unfortunately, my guilty conscience got the better of me. What a lot of new players don't realize is that there is the in-game persona, which I believe needs to be different from the out-of-game persona. From game to game, you can become a different player. Sometimes the trustworthy and loyal ally, sometimes the angry zealot, or times you can be the sycophantic yes-man. Part of the fun of this game, I think, is figuring out who you need to be in each game. And those personas are sometimes dictated by the game itself, so if you draw Italy, for instance, you're likely going to be the pawn of some of the other powers in the early game. In this game, I was the overbearing Russian tyrant who ruled with an iron fist and trampled anybody who got in my way. But sometimes, real life can get in the way of even my best plans for global domination. In a way, I wish I hadn't known that Turkey was playing for the first time. But when he was down to just one center left, which is coming up fairly soon, I just couldn't put the nail into the coffin. So looking back as a general, I'm kicking myself for letting the thorn live, but as a person who wants others to enjoy this game as much as I do, I'd rather take a loss than turn someone against this game right from the outset. So I don't regret that I didn't tie the cement galoshes onto Turkey and push him into the Black Sea. Right here you can see that I've basically taken him down to absolutely nothing. But in fact, uh, what would have been a one-sided trouncing in this game turned into the most memorable backstab that I've ever received. Ironically then, when I look back, this embarrassing loss for me is one of the most fun games I've played. So you can watch as he inserts the knife blade later in this game between my third and fourth vertebrae in the fall of 1908. We're not quite there yet, but it's coming. So at this stage, um, you can see in my moves that I had decided to uh, vacate Turkey and let him reclaim some of his home centers, uh, part of it out of guilt and part of it at strategically because I needed an ally. And you can see that I'm fighting Germany, I'm fighting England, I'm fighting Austria, and you can't fight everybody all at once, especially when you're, you're still reasonably low on centers. I mean, I've got a fairly good line here, but I wasn't completely dominating. So don't misinterpret what I'm saying here. Um, as you see him expanding and growing, these are centers that I've offered up freely to him, uh, knowing that I'm, I'm building for myself a strong ally down the road. But I'm not looking for pity because I, I got stabbed here. I absolutely deserve what's coming to me. This stab is going to be perfectly executed. It's the right play at exactly the right moment. So here he's almost reclaimed all of his home center. Uh, I'm fighting 
hard up in the, the north and holding off some advances there and it's, it's working out quite well, uh, but all eyes are turning to Russia at this point. So at the time when I get stabbed here, the incredulity I felt was unmatched in the diplomacy world. I was so completely blindsided by this, and I dare say that in your games of diplomacy, at some point you've been blindsided by a backstab. It doesn't usually happen to me anymore. Now I see when the stab is coming, there's nothing I can do about it. But in this game, I had absolutely no clue. And I had no clue how it could happen to me. That was how I was feeling. So in retrospect, I have nothing but absolute admiration for how this came um, to, to be because here I am, someone who's played this game for over 30 years, and I'm being taught two really important lessons by a first time player. And in a misguided way, I thought that by helping someone else, they would lay down their ambitions for victory and just help me out for being a nice guy. I was sort of like Citizen Kane in this game. I tried to buy his friendship. You can see me here again moving out. I'm not putting up a fight, letting him have those builds. And uh, and it almost began to feel as if it was pity builds and um, how cocky of me to assume that I was the one who could bequeath power onto uh, an ally this way. I tried to buy his friendship with builds, so I never truly gave him anything meaningful other than the table scraps, just like Citizen Kane. So that's no foundation for building a cooperative alliance. So just to, to rehash, basically, you should always expect to stab, but don't let it stop you from making allies. In retrospect, I should let him um, come back from the brink if I want to play this way and, and develop an ally. But watch here, this is where I begin to make some mistakes because as soon as he starts to get some power, now he leaps across to Sev, and that wasn't entirely planned, but it was a brilliant play by him because that gives him access to my entire back 50, and I'm so busy fighting wars on the front line that there's not much I can do here. So this brings us to the second lesson. The second lesson is called a chip and a chair. So in poker, they say that all you need is a chip and a chair and you can walk away with a pile of money. And I didn't realize that the same was true in diplomacy until I played this game. When I play diplomacy, it doesn't matter if I have 17 centers or one. I play with the exact same fervor. I don't quit when the going gets tough. And it was this game that taught me that. So a built-in balancing mechanism in the game is the leader conundrum. When one nation holds 14 or so centers, the rest of the world takes note and they unite. So from a Russian perspective, when I hit about 12 builds, it, it's probably better for me to give up some centers, help Turkey get back on his feet, earn a loyal ally, and have some Turkish fleets taking on Italy in the south. And so a Russian-Turkish alliance, though, often breeds animosity from the rest of the world. So perhaps my calculations left that consideration of the mix in this game too. So you can see that he's, he's completely helping himself. I've gone into full-on retreat mode. Um, I've secured all of England. I mean, I've done well in the game, but I'm out of position. And he knows it. And he took complete advantage. And I love that. And I tip my hat to him right now for doing that. Some content creators actually refuse to narrate their own diplomacy games because of the bias they might have when they analyze the game. However, for me, I find that weighing my own failings is the best way I know how to improve at this game. So going forward, I'm still going to work with allies and help the little guy when I can, but I'll also use an abundance of caution and, and not give them an opportunity to stab me. That would have been a very simple uh, thing to keep one fleet in Sev or to move my, my one fleet from Romania to Sev in case he attempted something as he did there. So a single well-placed unit can offer a significant deterrent. It can keep alliances together, especially if that unit is moving unpredictably. If your ally doesn't know where your piece is going to be next turn, they're very very much less likely to invade knowing that they could tip their hat to you and you might still block them anyways. So second, I'm always going to remember that even with a single unit and a well-timed stab, you can come back from the brink. Look at how well Turkey is doing here and he's done it all at my expense. He's secured Austria, he's got Turkey, he's taken most of my centers there. Now he's actually moving forward and going into Norway. So um, you have to respect what this guy has done in this game. When it comes down to it though, you need to ask yourself, why do you play diplomacy? It's certainly not to improve the quality of your friendships. Well, maybe in some cases it is. We're a strong group of players, keeps playing together and they repeatedly stab each other and that could be fun. It's probably not even to win because even France has only a 10% chance of winning and if you're Italy, it's a bleak 4.6%. So is that what makes a win so sweet? Is it like pandemic? 
where there's actually more fun to be had when you lose the game, but you still give it your best shot. So diplomacy forces gamers to reconcile that there's a balance between tactical mastery and working with actual humans who can sometimes be very unpredictable and stab you even though you've helped them out. This is a game about using language to persuade, to convince, to assuage, to strong arm, or even to encourage your opponents and your allies. So when it comes down to it, diplomacy is about how you choose to progress through multiple conflicts. It's not about where you make your last stand, or when you die, or how fast you get kicked out of the game. So enjoy your time while you're alive, and always be ready for the stab. You know it's coming. But remember too, that when you get down to the doldrums, don't give up. <laughs>